What's going on everyone? Vince the Longinier here. Today we're going to take care of some weeds and I'm going to share some tips with you. So stay tuned. All right, so it's the beginning of May. The grass is starting to grow pretty nicely. The weeds are also growing pretty nicely. <laughs> Not that that's really that nice, but my first tip here, if you're going to be controlling weeds post-emergently, is that you want to make sure that the weeds are growing, actively growing and growing vigorously because you want the chemical that you're going to be using to apply to spread over that leaf blade and work its way down through the roots, killing the plant. And when they're actively growing, that chemical will work more effectively, more efficiently and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's, that's what you want to do. Make sure you are applying the herbicides to actively growing weeds. Another thing we're going to be doing today is a blanket application. What do we mean by that? A blanket application is basically spraying the entire lawn. Um, you know, I've, I've got weeds all over the place. If you've got like 70%, 80% weeds, do the blanket application. Um, you know, if, if, if you've got more like spot areas, spotty areas where it's, you know, not as bad, you can get away with a spot application where you could just mix up a small little hand pump sprayer and just treat the weeds in those locations. You don't have to mix up a whole big batch like I'm going to be doing today for all 3,000 square feet in the front yard here. So, you know, I guess tip number two would be determine your method of spraying, whether it's going to be a pump sprayer, a hose end sprayer, backpack sprayer, are you doing a blanket application? Are you doing spot spraying? You know, you need to, you need to figure out what tools you're going to need and all that stuff based on what your application and what your intentions are. Tip number three really has to do with the temperature. Um, you know, when we're spraying, especially a blanket application like we're gonna do today, you know, the daytime temps matter. Um, you, you really don't wanna be spraying when temperatures are too high. Um, it's just gonna become very stressful for the grass plant. Um, and, and you may end up, you know, harming the the desirable turf right um you only really want to harm the weeds right you want to get rid of the weeds so you know daytime temps usually uh anywhere when you start approaching the 80s 85 degrees you want to avoid spraying during the day um some people can get away with waiting until the nighttime hours, um, you know, maybe six o'clock, seven o'clock at night when it's starting to cool down and then deciding to spray then, that's totally fine or very early in the mornings. But when that daytime sun is beating down on the lawn and you've got this freshly applied chemical, you're really going to induce a lot of stress to the existing good turf around. And, you know, you may actually be doing more harm than good. So make sure you're spraying when temperatures are optimal and there are different temperature ranges for different products. So make sure you're always reading the labels as well. All right, the next tip is using a non-ionic surfactant. Um, this is, some other people will call it like a sticker. Uh, you'll other, other people will call it like an oil. Um, basically, you know, what this is, is, and this is from Simple Lawn Solutions, um, it's a surfactant, right? And what that's going to do is help break the surface tension of water. And rather than um, allowing the chemical to bead up on the weed, it's going to break that surface tension of water that causes the beading and it's going to apply a smooth layer. You'll get smoother, more even, more efficient coverage over the leaf blade of the weed, making it more efficient and effective to work and, you know, kill the entire weed. So there are many different types of surfactants and actually there are certain types of chemicals or herbicides that require different types of surfactants. So make sure you're reading the label, to make sure you're using the right surfactants for that. Uh, for the most part, um, you know, if you're getting something like I've got here from Home Depot today, um, you can get away with even like, you know, Johnson & Johnson's, you know, baby shampoo. Um, that's, that's totally fine, that's worked. I've used it before, it works. Uh, but there's also like methylated seed oil and other things that, you know, work specifically with certain types of herbicides. So uh, if you're using more of those, you know, um, 
commercial grade type herbicides um, that you're getting at like a site one or something like that, you wanna be a little more cautious and make sure you're reading those labels and using the right surfactants for those products. Another tip has to do about mowing, and that is you really don't wanna mow before or right after spraying for the weeds. You want uh, enough leaf surface to exist to be there when you go to spray. So typically, you know, one to two days, you know, try not to mow one to two days before you plan to apply and then let it sit on that weed for a couple days afterwards before you go and chop everything off. You wanna make sure everything works its way down through the entire plant structure into the roots to kill the entire weed. Another thing to consider is the weather. Um, Typically, you don't want to be spraying this stuff it's if you've got rain in the forecast. You don't want any of that herbicide to wash off, uh, you know, after you've, uh, you know, walked the yard and sprayed everything. Um, some products like this one right here are what are called rain fast in one hour, which means, you know, after one hour, if it rains, it's, 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 it's okay. It'll still work. Um, but just keep an eye on the weather, also wind, right? If we're gonna be spraying, we're gonna be using the backpack sprayer. Uh, you don't want it to be too windy. You don't want there to be, you don't wanna have too much, you know, uh, drift uh, is what it's called. When, when you're spraying and the wind picks up and you know, your spray ends up drifting to the left or to the right or in front of you or towards you, um, you end up getting sprayed with everything and or or other plants that maybe you're around like bushes or something get sprayed and you don't want those to be sprayed you want to make sure you're spraying directly to the grass area on the weeds and you don't want there to be too much drift so make sure it's not too windy as well keep an eye out for that weather okay for all the safety sallies out there PPE is important um, I will be wearing rubber gloves I've got my safety glasses I've got my Shoes, closed toe shoes, pants, long sleeve shirt. Um, be safe out there. You know, don't get this stuff on your hands. Don't get this stuff on your body. If you get it on your clothes, make sure you're washing your clothes afterwards. Um, don't mix it in with other laundry. Wash them separately, all that good stuff. You know, be safe out there when spraying. Be responsible. And as always, last tip, always, always, always read the label instructions specifically on the product that you are working with and make sure you are following those instructions. All right, so now quick update because in my last video, I did apply the Simple Lawn Solution 1648. That was about a week and a half ago as of the time of filming this. Um, and the lawn looks pretty good. I'll show you an area actually on the other side that actually you could kind of see the difference between my yard and my neighbor, neighbor's yard that looks really good. Um, we have an area right here, I've, I've mentioned this area before. This was, um, you know, an area that was completely wooded, vegetated, it had English ivy all over the place. There's still some tree stumps there. I do plan on completely redoing everything, but this is gonna be a specific area that we focus on. And there are weeds in here. Um, I am going to spray this today. The growth here is somewhat stunted. Um, I'm, I'm risking, you know, killing it with this herbicide I'm going to be using today uh, because it's it's not quite mature grass. So it's actually at risk of dying, I think, and it probably will die. We'll see how it does. Um, I don't um, recommend spraying areas like this if you're trying to get this to grow. Um, but this is going to be sort of like an experimental area here. We'll see what happens. If it dies, it dies. Not a big deal. But to give you an idea of the weeds that we have, here's quite a bit of what we've got. And look at all this stuff. It's, it's all in here. Everything. It's all weeds. And, and the entire lawn looks like this. Broadleaf weeds. You got it. You name it. We have it. Um, you know, here we got some dandelion, clover, you know, we're gonna try and kill all this stuff and and we'll see, you know, what we could do. I mean, you know, I, I think 70% of this is weed. So coming out of this after everything's dead, it, it might look pretty bad. Um, you know, you'll, you'll probably see a lot of brown spots, uh, but then we'll come back later on. We'll hit it with some fertilizer. Um, I do have some granular fertilizer I'm also gonna be using and adding to my program for this season. So. Make sure you're subscribed and uh, follow along so you can see that application go down. 
but we'll just see how this all comes out. Yeah. I'm really interested to know from you guys actually what you would do if you were in my situation inheriting an ugly lawn like this. Um, what would be the steps that you would take to get it back to your standards? Let me know, let us know down below. All right, now we are on the other side of the lawn here where you can kind of see a clear difference here between the darker green and the lighter green here. I'm walking along the property line here and this is where I sprayed with the 1648. So it's, it's working, things are greening up, things look pretty good. Here it is looking the other way. I'm looking the other way just so you can tell, it's not just from striping. Um, you see it both ways, both directions. But uh, you know, the simple lawn solution 1648 works good. Um, I am being dominated by my neighbor on this side though. He does take really good care of his lawn and uh, you know, it's looking, it's looking pretty good. But uh, let's see if we can see any difference here or down here. Not too much. He's definitely darker than I am, but uh, we'll get there. You can see a little bit of a difference down here. I don't know if that's coming on camera, but you can see a little bit of difference. You know, it's been about a week and a half. Usually with the liquids, like from Simple Lawn Solutions, you get really quick results from this. So overall, it's a little darker back here too. Again, all this up here is mostly weeds. This is all like that stunted growth I was mentioning, um, which is probably gonna die when I spray this today, uh, and that's okay. Uh, but, you know, this, this overall looks looks good. We got some pretty good turf back here. It's not too bad, but once we go in this direction and all up in here, it's just inundated with weeds and uh, looks absolutely terrible. So let's get right to it. Filling up the backpack sprayer, filling it up with the herbicide I have and uh, spraying everything. So this is the product I'm using today. You can pick this up at Lowe's, Home Depot. This is Bear Advanced all-in-one lawn weed and crabgrass killer. Uh, this is what's considered a like triplicate herbicide. It's got three active ingredients that are really being used to control an assortment of weeds over like a hundred different varieties, right? Um, so this is the one we're going with today. Um, the application rates on this, I think are something like 3.2 ounces of this for that covers up to 500 square feet. We have 3000 square feet. So we'll do the math to get all that right, mix it all up in the backpack sprayer. But every rate for every product is gonna be a little bit different. Again, if you're not getting it already, make sure you read the label for the specific product that you're using for your lawn. Absolutely important. It's got everything that you need to make sure and ensure that you get a proper application. All right, as I'm filling this up, I do want to mention one other tip, um, especially if you're using like a pump sprayer or a backpack sprayer, um, make sure you're using the fan tipped nozzle. So right here, I've got a T-Jet nozzle here. That is a fan tipped nozzle. That's gonna put out a nice fine mist. And you want that fine mist in, in combination with the surfactant to give you that smooth coverage over the leaf blades. To show you what I mean, this is what the fan tip nozzle sprays like. See that? Super fine. This is just water. I haven't mixed anything in it yet, but it's super fine. And that's what you want. You want to evenly coat. You see that? Evenly coat with the fan tip nozzle. Now, I don't have any surfactant in here, so you might see the beading I don't, know if you can see, I don't know if the beading comes through there, but the surfactant will eliminate that beading and give you a smooth coverage over the entire plant. All right, so we're gonna be using this Simple Lawn Solutions here. Um, I've got three gallons in here, only a half ounce per gallon here. So we'll just go an ounce and a half, which is about there. I like the blue color of this. All right, we'll make sure this is good. Yeah, dump that in. And then we want to make sure we mix all that up. All right. All right. Okay, so I'm going to spray this uh, test spot here to show you the difference. Now, this has the weed killer in it with the surfactant. I'm gonna show you the difference between 
what I showed you previously with the water beating over the surface of these plants and then with using the surfactant, show you how smooth this gets covered. All right, let's have a look and I'll show you. So you see this, see how it's more or less glistening. The entire plant is glistening. It's not like beaded, like over here where we sprayed previously. See, these are like beads of water, right? I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera or not, but that's beaded water where over here, it's smooth coverage, right? That's what you want. You want that smooth, even coverage throughout. And that's, that's what we're gonna try to achieve today to get that most efficient spray application. All right, so here we are, ready to go. I'm gonna start with a trim pass over everything. So that means basically just going around the perimeter of the yard and then just going back and forth like I'm mowing, trying to stay in line. Typically when I do spray applications, I do mow before and I have sort of like these mowing lines or like my guidelines, I call them, that help me keep track of where I sprayed. I'm not sure if you can see them here. I don't have many lines. There's a few of them, so I may, I may just walk in this direction, you know, and try to see if I can catch the old stripes from my last mow from a couple days ago to see if I can uh, stay in line and make sure I'm, you know, not either over applying on one side or missing spots. You know, you wanna make sure you, uh, you basically follow some kind of direction um, so that you're not over spraying or under spraying. And there you have it. I hope these tips were helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.